CCTV News gathers information from town meetings and events, departmental updates, and COVID-19 here in York County and Berwick. BCTV News will be shown daily at 9 a.m. and 7 p.m. on Comcast channels 95 and 22, as well as streaming at www.berwicktv.org. It will also be available on demand and via our YouTube channel. Today, we want to join people all over the United States who are remembering the lives lost during the attacks on September 11, 2001. BCTV would like to send our thoughts and prayers to all who lived through this tragedy and are still struggling today with the aftermath. We spoke with Patricia Murray, Berwick's town clerk. There have been many questions from residents regarding absentee ballot requests. At this time, you may have received multiple requests from different organizations in the state. The town clerk will explain about these requests and give additional information voters should know. Hi, I'm Patricia Murray, the town clerk in Berwick, and I'm here to talk about the absentee voting application process. Absentee voting allows you to cast a ballot without going to a voting place on election day. Any registered voter may cast an absentee ballot instead of voting in person on election day. To receive an absentee ballot, you must complete an absentee ballot application, which you will deliver to the clerk's office. You may submit the application online, by telephone, or by mail. The online and telephone methods are to request your own ballot. If you need to request a ballot for an immediate family member, you may do this by mail or in person. Applications can be obtained online at maine.gov, where you can complete an electronic request or download an application to complete and deliver by mail or in person to the clerk's office. Applications are also available at Town Hall and can also be called in to the clerk's office. You may receive several applications in the mail from various organizations. These organizations receive the information from the Secretary of State's office. The applications are legitimate and may be used. You only need to submit one application. Any duplicate applications will be rejected. All voters requesting an absentee ballot will only receive one ballot. Ballots are available 30 days prior to any election. Ballots for the November 3rd election will be available October 2nd. If you request an absentee ballot prior to October 2nd, it will be mailed to you. If you request an absentee ballot in person after October 2nd, you have the option to vote in the presence of the clerk at that time or to take the ballot home with you. Please allow enough time for mailing if you request a ballot electronically or by mail after October 2nd. The deadline for telephone and online requests is 5 p.m. on Thursday, October 29th. Voters may vote in the presence of the clerk until Friday, October 30th at 12.30 p.m. The application is very user-friendly. There are six sections to complete. Please complete the telephone number or email section in case there is an issue so we can contact you. If you are not registered to vote and we receive an application for an absentee ballot from you, we will contact you to get you registered. Please call the clerk's office if you have any questions or concerns. To reach the town clerk's office, please call 207-698-1101. My direct extension is 110. The town website is www.berwickmaine.org. If you need to register to vote, you may do so by going to the Secretary of State's website at maine.gov, or you can stop into Town Hall. We have applications available. If you do complete an electronic request, you will receive a confirmation email accepting your application. Thank you. We want to welcome the new Noble Adult and Community Education Director, Nicole Ivey. She shared a little about herself and about fall classes and how they are operating under COVID-19. Hi, I'm Terry Wright and I'm here today with Nicole Ivey, the new Noble Adult and Community Education Director. 
Thank you, Nicole, for being with us. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself, please? Sure, thank you for having me. So um, my name is Nicole Ivey. I am the director at Noble Adult and Community Education as well as Stanford Adult and Community Education. Um, I live in Lebanon currently with my husband and two sons, ages 11 and 12. They're also in the Noble School System. I'm also a graduate of the Noble School System, and so I was very happy to be coming home. Wonderful. Um, I understand you're splitting your time between the Noble Adult Education um, Program and the Sanford Program. How does that work for you? So I'll be splitting my time um, Mondays and Thursdays. Typically I'll be in Sanford. Tuesdays and Wednesdays typically I'll be at Noble. Um, and then Friday is rotating depending on, you know, any given week there's going to be some ebb and flow to the work. Okay. How would people get in touch with you if you're in both places? Do you have a way for people to communicate with you? Mm -hmm. Yep, so our number at Noble Adult Ed is 207-676-3223. Um, and my email is nicole.ivy at msad60.org. I'm hoping that maybe you can show that on your screen for <laughs> yes. me. I'm sure we can. The fall offerings, can you tell us a little bit about how that's going to work? Because I noticed some of them are remote and some of them are actually going to be in person. That's our hope. Uh, we did push back our enrichment offerings to October. So while we do have our academic students on site currently, um, our enrichment offerings won't begin until the first week of October. As you know, given the pandemic, things are changing daily. Um, so our hope is that we make it that far and that we're able to still run these classes and bring our community back together in ways that we've not yet been able to since the pandemic began in March. Um, so for those that are happening on site, we will be wearing masks, we will be practicing social distancing, we will be limiting class sizes, unfortunately. Um, and for those happening online, uh, we'll be predominantly using Zoom just because it's the less, um, we, we found that it has less barriers for folks. You don't need specific accounts or it's just right. a link that you can click in and, and view. And so we hope whether we're together in site, on site in person or remotely that folks are still able to connect back with us this fall. That was going to be one of my questions was asking you how it works for in person and online. Mm -hmm. Are there anything special that the online people will need to have? No, upon registration, we'll issue live links okay. um, for people to be able to zoom into their online classes. And then in terms of on-site, as I mentioned, we'll, we align ourselves with district policy. And so much of what's happening in the daytime for our, our kids is, will be happening in the evenings for us as well. One of the other questions would be, where are the classes that are going to be in person? Where would those occur? Yep, the majority of our classes happen right here at Noble High School. Um, we have use of several classrooms in the evenings where we um, typically hold our classes. So really no different space than we've used before, um, but again, we'll have to be limiting class sizes due to physical distancing regulations. Can you give us some examples of the classes that will be online as opposed to in person? It really varies per instructor. It's partially instructor preference, um, partially what we're able to accommodate here in the building. and so. The brochure that went out did a pretty good job of indicating which courses would be online and which would be on site. Given some of the recent community transmission in York County, um, some other instructors have contacted us saying that they would also like to go remote. And so anytime someone's calling to register for a class or anytime they're going online to register, they'll be notified that that class is either on site or remote. Okay. at which time they can choose if they still want to participate. Now I know there's been some changes as far as the adult education program is concerned. Can you tell us who the current employees are that people might speak to when they call in? Mm -hmm. So we've faced a lot of changes, um, myself being one of them. Yeah. So Brenda Gagne retired after 21 years of faithful and dedicated service to the program, to the communities. Um, so I've taken the reins from Brenda um, beginning in July. Um, we also have Shelby Karen, who is our enrichment coordinator, that does a lot of the community programming. Lisa Smith is our um, front end extraordinaire and really is the point person most folks will talk to when they give us a call. Um, Louise Burns is our academic advisor. Susan Dagnall is our college and career counselor. Uh, Tammy Belanger does most of our ELL work with folks in the community and voting and citizenship and just 
amazing things that she's doing. Um, and we also have other instructors. Jill Smith is a computer teacher. Um, we have Kelly McGlynn, Spencer Libby, um, et cetera, et cetera. I know I'm leaving someone out, but we have a pretty large staff yeah. in addition to dozens of enrichment instructors who contribute every year. Okay. How would people register for classes this year? I know we used to have an open house where they'd come mm -hmm. in and register. How would people do that now? Yeah, we actually have registrations coming in um, every day throughout the day. And so there are several ways. One is um, online, so nobleadulta.org. Um, we also are taking registrations over the phone. I provided our number earlier. I'm sure you can get that up for us. Um, and we are still taking walk-in registrations. We're only able to take, you know, one or two people in our office at a time. Mm -hmm. um, and we are following CDC protocol and asking questions whether folks are asymptomatic or not. Um, so it looks a little bit different because it has to, but we are moving forward. Is there anything more that you would like the public to know about the Noble Adult and Community Education Program or about yourself? The only other thing I'd like residents and community members to know is that we are open. Um, I don't know for how long, given the pandemic and you know some issues that we're facing um, as a result. However, regardless of whether we're on site or whether we are remote, um, we will still continue to operate just as we did since March. The parking lot on Sullivan Street is almost completed. A layer of gravel has been applied and the granite markers for the parking areas are being placed. They paved the entranceway and will complete the loam and seating within the next week. Libby Scott is completing the paving on Pine Hill Road between the Water Tower and Worcester Road. There is still work to do on the shoulders and patch and driveways. The main Department of Transportation is almost finished paving Route 9. Workers ask that drivers please slow down and observe signs. When the sign says stop, please stop three to four car lengths back from the worker. This will ensure that if someone behind you does not stop in time, the worker will be spared any serious injury. When the sign changes and you are allowed to pass, do so slowly and watch out for workers walking beside the equipment. They are doing their jobs and ask drivers to respect them so they can go safely home to their family. BCTV reminds residents that we are in a severe drought. Watering holes and swamp areas where animals would typically get a drink have dried up. Please remember to put out water for our fine feathered friends and other critters during this drought. COVID-19 data for York County as of September 11th, 2020. There are 954 cases with 854 confirmed, 100 probable, 15 deaths, 89 hospitalizations, and 783 recoveries. Berwick has increased to 17 probable and confirmed cases. BCTV News is a recap of meetings, events, and town happenings. If you have a news item that you think we should cover, Send your request to bctv at berwickmaine.org. BCTV is completely funded through franchise fees from Comcast. We are a nonprofit entity and we are bound by the rules established for public access stations by the FCC. Berwick residents who subscribe to Comcast may watch our public educational videos on Channel 22 and our government meetings departmental, and informational videos on Channel 95. Both channels run 24-7 and are streamed at www.berwicktv.org.